I think that the number one uh, message is that it is an exciting time in acute lymphoblastic leukemia because we have multiple new options for treating both our relapse patients and the option of improving survival for our frontline patients with these new antibody, antibody conjugates bites and potentially CAR T cells. So the focus of this talk was really to describe the use and the approval process for inotuzumab, uh, which uh, has been approved in the United States in relapsed refractory ALL and has tremendous activity in that subset and uh, really has response rates in the level, in the range of the CAR T cell therapies. Uh, for patients who express CD22. Uh, and so what I was describing were a couple challenging cases. One case of mine, who had had multiple prior therapies, including some of the new immunotherapies, but still responded to uh, the inotuzumab, which was exciting and gave her the opportunity to move forward with a transplant. And the point being that with inotuzumab, even though there's been concern about liver toxicity, you can move forward safely with an allogeneic transplant. And the data suggest from the original Inovate study that uh, those patients can do quite well with good long-term disease-free survival post-transplant with about a 40% survival rate. Uh, and then the most exciting, I think, is the fact that we're able to now begin to introduce these agents into frontline therapies. Um, there are two sort of strategies for that at the moment. One, they're both sort of the same in a way, but one is to add inotuzumab to very effective therapies for young adults. Um, and that's what we're doing in the U.S. intergroup right now. That's a study that's being run by the Alliance. Dan D'Angelo is the PI of the study. And we've just opened it. It will be introducing inotuzumab into frontline therapy with the idea that we know from our previous study, on which this one is based, that patients who are MRD negative early in treatment have an 85% disease-free survival, which is better than we've done ever in young adult ALL. And so the idea would be that instead of only 35% of those patients getting MRD negativity early, perhaps we can get a much higher percentage negative, and maybe that will translate, translate into even improved event-free survival for a much larger population of patients. And so that study's ongoing. It just opened in the US, and it's in the safety phase right now to make sure that it's safe to combine inotuzumab with chemotherapy. And we finished the enrollment there for the safety phase, and just watching the patients so far, we were very encouraged. Uh, and hopefully, we'll open nationally in just a couple of weeks, actually. Uh, and the other option is for our older adults, where really the intensive approach has not been effective. We have about 10% long-term survival in our older adults, and older isn't even that much older, over the age of 60, uh, which has been our problem in the United States and in Europe, everywhere, and in Asia. And uh, so what we're doing is we're reducing the amount of chemotherapy but introducing these antibodies early, again with the hope that these high remission rates and relapse will translate into very high re remission rates and potentially long-term survival in these older adults. And there's been a very nice study, uh, early study from this single center from MD Anderson, combining inotuzumab into frontline therapy for older adults with excellent high remission rates, 100% remission rates, very high MRD negativity rates, and good event-free survival so far, uh, with about uh, median follow-up of three years now. So uh, the idea for the future is potentially to use both sets of antibody, antibody conjugates, kites uh, in frontline therapy for our older adults and avoid chemotherapy. Whether that's a crazy idea or not, we hope it's not, but that's our plan in the U.S. intergroup. And the alliance is going to have a study, we hope, if it's approved by the National Cancer Institute, of no real chemotherapy, just the new conjugates and bites and intrathecal therapy for frontline disease. Well, so we'll see.